Greetings and welcome to the Filter Specification Analysis Video Tutorial Series Part 2 of 3, the Synthesis Function. In this video, we will show you how to set up the specification mask and how to predict the design margins using some matrix. We will continue to use the previous specification and synthesize results from Part 1. If you haven't already watched Part 1, I strongly recommend you review that tutorial first. I've included a link in the description below for your convenience. If you haven't done so already, let's begin by logging into some matrix. In the following tutorial, we will start by accessing and loading our work from Part 1. Although we didn't show how a project was saved, the save and load action is achieved from the same menu location. After logging in, Go to Project Management, located here. Choose the design and click Load Project. You will also see the option to save the project in this exact same menu. Users can import the customer's specification to create the specification mask, which includes the return loss, isolation, insertion loss, and group delay. Click the Specification tab to enable this feature. By activating the specification tab, the user is able to input the perimeter values for each spec dimension. For the purposes of this example, we have pre-imported all the customer requested specifications. The user is able to see the specification mask in the S parameter plot. In future updates, Symmetrix will continue to provide more specifications to help the user's design process. For each specification dimension, Symmetrix provides a pass-fail indicator to show if the current design can meet the required specification. The red X means you need to fine-tune or rework your design. The green checkmark means the current design meets that particular specification dimension requirement. The user can also set the thermal shift specifications in the thermal setting tab by selecting the suitable material as well as the temperature range located here. Symmetric offers four common materials, aluminum, copper, brass, and invar. By selecting the base material, in our case, aluminum, the corresponding coefficient of linear thermal expansion, or CTE, will be selected as well. To customize this value, we offer users the ability to input the temperature range. In our case, it ranges from negative 30 to plus 80 degrees C. Once the thermal shift value is returned here, the user is able to see how much frequency margin can be obtained in order to compensate for the thermal shift values. If we scroll to each of the specification dimensions, we can see the impact of the thermal shift values. Symmetric provides a red box indicator to inform the user that the design margin may not be enough and may fail during a thermal cycling test. In the next video, we will show you user how to deal with these thermal shift failures by using the fine-tune function. Thank you for listening and good luck with your designs.